Happy holidays. Welcome to my channel, my Sawdust. And I'm your host, Darius. Uh, we're gonna make a quick little break from the usual building stuff for the shop, storage solutions, stuff like that. It is the holidays. Uh, I do have videos that will be coming out shortly, but I'll have the actual how-to builds shortly after the holidays. But this is a special request from a co-worker at work. Uh, she had a bunch of wood pieces that she salvaged, a lot of cedar. This is a little clip of what I'm talking about. So as you can see, a couple of tall pieces of about six, seven foot pieces. I don't really attached because they were put from a play set. And then you have the two longer pieces and then you have the four short pieces. So she has those. She asked if I can build her a chest for her blankets. And I was like, I should be able to. I am hosting a woodworking YouTube channel. And I was like, sure. So we agreed on a price. And obviously, you know, this was more of a practice. Give me some uh, content for you guys to, to build something. So we decided a date to pick up the wood, came over, picked it up. Next day she asked if I can get it done before Christmas. And I was like, I might as well. I can pretty much try. I have a kind of idea in my head of how I would build one. And I was like, sure. So did I get it done? Well, you're gonna have to stick around and watch me try to get this done in a couple days. Three days to be exact. So, sit back, relax, and watch me try to get this done in a couple days. All right. All right, so, here we go. This is the beginning of me trying to figure out how to get this thing built. So let's roll the footage of me getting this uh, <laughs> blanket chest vision onto a whiteboard and we'll go from there. All right, so this is the cedar blanket chest out of scrap cedar pieces. So here's my quick drawing. I decided to go with 60 inches wide, 20 inches deep, and then roughly between 17 to 20 inches high. And also it was a decision between one full piece to open or two split. I went with the two split. All right, everybody. This is the exclusive premiere of the ultimate workbench in action. So the tabletop piece comes off. There you see my Meyer saw and check out the magic. So the fun part begins. First step is basically take these all apart. There's four sets. Each one is connected four pieces at a time. These were basically from a swing set. So as I'm taking them apart, realize that the support pieces are glued, of course. It was definitely some good glue because it took a while to get some of these pieces actually disattached. But I figured it out. It 
got a little good swing to it and just kept going. So here I'm making the first set of cuts. I'm getting the long pieces cut down first at 60 inches. I'm going to you know, cut about two of them at a time, or three, I don't remember exactly how many I did. But that way I'll take the top one off, attach a couple more, get them clamped up so they don't move around. This way I'm using the top one as a, like a stop block to speed up the process instead of getting each batch attached together and then making the cuts here I just you know put one on top there you go cut put another one on top cut and you're good to go it's all about being as productive as possible along as being accurate also so basically what I did was just clamp the whole set together all lined up in the back half and then that's, I'll have my repeated cuts and they're equal, so I don't have to keep measuring back and forth, back and forth. Got a nice screw. Get it basically where it needs to be. Guess what time it is? Every woodworker's favorite thing to do. What is it? Any guesses? You in the back? You? Building? No, that's, that's, a, that's a given. Sanding, said almost no woodworker ever. Okay, maybe for some sandings actually relaxing, which it can be, which I did. I was in the groove, had some good music playing, and I was just kind of going with the flow. It was kind of relaxing. You kind of zone out of any thoughts you had. You're just focusing on the sanding. there's multiple ways of filling holes. I ended up using some of the sawdust from all the sanding I just did and try to fill some of the holes so I'm not using too much of that CA glue. So I fill the holes and then use the CA glue and then did, sprayed it to get it hardened and eventually went to the next piece to the next piece and there's a whole bunch of boards so it took a while.
So here I'm basically doing butt joints, basically. And you can make these longer if you're following along at home. And you could have it basically raised up a little bit. But I'm going to have it pretty close to being flush to the ground. Gotta get the trusty old clamp back there. Get it up pretty much aligned. And definitely use your speed square to make sure you're dead on straight 90 degrees. Clamp it back down. Get the brad nail. And get it nailed in. definitely use glue first and then use a bread nailer to get it all attached but this is more still like a decorative section of it I do have reinforcement later and everything gets basically attached there and glue will be used attaching the other pieces of the wall together so I figured here be a little bit quicker and still be sturdy enough Alright, here, getting everything lined up, it's basically kind of starting from the bottom up to get everything laid out. Making sure everything is square. And then basically here is where I'm going to be using the glue to get everything secured along with the brad nail. Another thing is to pay attention for is when you're putting those corners together, make sure they're lined up correctly because you're using butt joints. Obviously, one side will be different. So just make sure you're consistent, lay it out the way you want it to look. Yeah, definitely using the brad nail makes it a little bit quicker. While the glue dries, you have everything pretty much secure. Wipe the excess glue. Also, don't forget the, using spacers to line everything up. It makes it so much easier when you're going to assemble. So there is my two pieces to be the spacers. Align everything. Make sure everything square looks right. And again, clamp at least one side down so you know it won't move around. Everything is square. Once you're ready to glue, spread the glue nice and even. Get all the planks back in there. Everything's aligned. And then just braille nail them in. Definitely pay attention to how many nails you used. So here I'm just kind of getting everything sorted, picking out the best side that I'm going to use to be showing and then picking out which one's going to be on the front side and what's on the back side. And now it's basically getting everything assembled. Let's grab a little piece to get it lifted up to represent the very bottom piece. And again, start from the bottom and work your way up. Do one side. Everything should be pretty much flush 
and even as you check to make sure the was square earlier you're just sliding in the bigger pieces and again for safety measure check to make sure it's still square it is just have the top one kind of you know, make any adjustments you're pretty much ready to go and then you just flip it just easy work from this angle of doing everything basically ready to start getting it glued. So lay the glue and just slide them into this place. Wiping any axes. Just making cleanup is easier and you have less sanding and you want to see it. But you gotta just do another quick test of this square. And tack it in with something great. Now, tip goes back on the other side, and now as we do this last wall, and again, spread the glue, and then just slide it from the top to the bottom, each plank. Once that's in place, just use the brad nail and tack it in, and you should be good to go to the next step. All right, so here I am just basically now adding some support to make it more stable, especially if anyone's going to sit on here, especially like grandkids and stuff like that. So I pretty much used a 2x4, ripped it in half to be the long stretch there, and a couple pieces for the corners. So a quick update, as you can see, I had the box. I added a little bit of some more support. Uh, didn't record it. It was just basically just getting some two by fours, cut them in a half, just have some bit of a base around and get a little bit more support sturdiness, especially when the top goes on there and there's you know, more support. Then I started getting a little creative. There's gonna be a center piece. So instead of getting a two by four, it's going to look kind of tacky when everything else is cedar. I already have the frame. It's going to be pretty much covered, as you will see with what my plan is on the top. So I took the 2x4, so it's going to have some more support in the center. If any grandkids, little kids sit on this chest, they'll support their weight. So what I did, cut it up to fit the support and support this up so it won't sag down. Also. To get support in the center instead of having a 2x4 here, cut the little notch that will fit the cedar that I cut to the length I need, and the little two grooves using my sled on the table saw. And then basically it'll just slide right in here once I place this under there. And then we get pretty much the support in the middle and then I'll have the two chests or the chest being able to open either side instead of all at once figure give the option of So as you can see right on top, these are those two long pieces that were separate from the whole batch. These happen to be a little bit wider, which was perfect because that shrunk that gap in the middle. So instead of being forced to make six rows of planks, I can now just use the four, just like the original way they were set up. So yeah, now it's just kind of laying out all the rest of the pieces that are going to be used for the actual top. This is basically you're just eyeing everything to 
to see which one visually looks better. So the best part is, as you can see, once I put the table, or the actual top on the uh, chest there, I was so glad that realizing that the uh, two long pieces that I had were actually wider than all the other uh, planks that were attached together in the beginning of the clip of the savage wood that we had. So when I put that on the actual top on the edges there, once I kind of put the four pieces, because originally when I looked at it, you know, having some kind of backing on there looked like I was needed to have about six of those pieces, which means I would have to break another piece set apart and attach them and then try to figure it out how to get them reinforced together. Obviously the easiest way was having just continue having the four connected because I had the pieces that obviously came with them. Having to add two more, obviously I had to break it apart and try to reattach those to that. But luckily once I realized that those were actually a little bit wider, put those on the edges, put the four in between, kind of spaced them out just using the spare scrap wood I had, and I happen to have a quarter inch uh, thick plywood. I don't even remember where I had that piece from. But got that spaced out, came out right. And what's happening now is I'm just kind of making some marks so I can reference them once I put that uh, piece that connected all four planks together. I can actually just get it all screwed in together and have one big piece that will just slide in. So right now it's basically time to get the four planks attached together. So let's start off with just two of them on each. And since I have spare pieces, I'm going to actually put a center piece just for extra stability and strength. The final stretch of this last minute build here uh, is for a co-worker, as I said earlier, and she wanted it before Christmas. So obviously the goal was to get it done as quick as possible, but obviously it's dirty. So the last part here now is get the hinges attached. Uh, I found these at Home Depot. Kind of has that, you know, chest kind of feel to them. And then also got a little handle easy access of opening it. So it's basically time to attach these. So I'm going to use the uh, little quarter inch uh, leftover scrap plywood that I had that actually spaced out each little uh, cedar plank here. And it pretty much looks like be enough to space the back so it's even on both sides so the center will not be rubbing against each other and I can get the spacing just right so they're as close as possible and as straight as possible. So let's get to it.
slow look. Also at Home Depot, pretty much in the same section. You the hinges and then your little handles right next to each other. And they actually match the little designs. I don't know if you can see the detail. But kind of has that feel of like, you know, old school chest. So I think she'll like it. And I'll get these installed. Finding the current uh, hinges with a little handle. I asked if she wanted me to cut out a little groove for maybe to lift it up or do a handle. She said she's fine for handle, so I tried to find something, and luckily, those I found hinges that match the handles, and it kind of goes with that, you know, treasure chest, toy chest, blanket chest kind of theme and look to it. So I was happy with that. Got that attached, and <laughs> let's continue on. That's pretty much it. Only thing I have to do left is the bottom pieces. And luckily for me, I still have a few of the boards left. Got two that are already sanded down, ready to get installed. Two more pieces here left. And once I'll measure it out, see how many cuts I have to make. And then it looks like I'll be done. Alright, so it's about two days before Christmas and I am done. Only thing to do now is uh, figure out how I'm going to get this chest over there. Don't really have much help right now. Uh, funny thing is I even see how much this thing weighs. But it is cedar and I've been moving it around this table. Should be fine, right? Let's find out. Another build is done. This time it wasn't ready for me because obviously it's not part of the shop, but it's a build nonetheless. Uh, this was for a coworker, like I said. She will be happy. She requested it to try to get it done before Christmas, and I have delivered. Well, almost. I gotta actually get it over there, but. All in all, it is done. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me get this thing built. It's amazing how uh, it went from a couple piles of uh, cedar uh, wood into a chest that I kind of, you know, kind of made up. And I think it turned out great. I took a couple snapshots and had little sneak peeks and she was really happy about it. She was actually proud of me, so I'll take it. Uh, until then, uh, I will see you guys after Christmas, and I hope you guys enjoy your holidays. I know I will. Until then, go make some. See ya. Now, how am I going to carry this out of here?
So there you have it. I managed to get it out of here. It's pretty light. Uh, thank goodness for that. Because I'll be pretty much the one carrying it over there. So until then, see ya. And I want to definitely welcome all the recent newcomers to the channel. Thank you for subscribing. Make sure you hit that bell and hit the like. Add your comments. And I will see you on the next video. Happy holidays, everybody.